Welcome to Subramani. Uh, doing a post-mortem analysis of any event is uh, very difficult simply because uh, we have the result bias uh, staring, in our, uh, staring us in our face. So, uh, let me take you back to the 1980s. Uh, India was or maybe 1990s, I am not very sure. Uh, India was touring Pakistan and Pakistan had a very uh, great team. It had Zahir Abbas, uh, Asif Iqbal, Imran Khan was in his prime, right? So, that was the time when uh, uh, Pakistan was batting in the test match and they needed a few runs in the last 2-3 uh, overs. So, there was no restriction as to who could bowl. Uh, Bishan Singh Bedi was the captain and he decided to bring on himself. Now, when you are a captain, uh, you will always be accused of over bowling or under bowling. It's very difficult to say <clears throat> this is the time when I'll bowl. Uh, I'm sure all bowling captains, whether it is Imran or Bedi or uh, Kapil Dev uh, or Anil Kumble, have gone through this. Uh, this is the last over. This is an important over. Should I be bowling it? Bishan Bedi decided that he will bowl the overs. The other choice was uh, he had uh, Mohinder Ramarnath, whom he could have asked him to bowl. And Mohinder Ramarnath used to bowl military pace. Uh, it was very difficult to get him away with, but then uh, if you decided that you could take the risk, you could walk down the pitch and hammer him for a six. It was not so much of an issue. Uh, he was not the greatest of bowlers. So, given a choice between the world's best left arm spinner, at least at that point in time, versus a military medium, uh, Mohinder Ramarnath, uh, it looked like a good choice that um, uh, Bedi was making of saying, I'll bowl myself. myself. Uh, so, Bedi came on to bowl and I think the batsman was Imran Khan and Imran Khan hit him for uh, I think three sixes and the match was sealed. The pa Pakistan won the match. Obviously, Bijan Bedi was then castigated by the press, uh, ripped apart by I think he lost his captaincy and all those things happened simply because of something called a result bias. Now, when you know what happened with the result, it is easy to say that it was a bad decision. Though personally, if you ask me, I think it was a very good decision because all the sixes fell very close to the boundary. It could have resulted in a catch, it could have resulted in a stumping. Some, uh, the, uh, uh, Imran Khan could have jumped down the wicket trying to hit a six and miss the ball and could be bowled. Any of these things could happen and he was the most accurate um, spinner in the world, right? So, that is what he was. And so, why would he bring him on? So, no, so Bijan Bedi was uh, crucified for that decision. I am not even saying what the BCC I did was right or wrong. Uh, maybe B uh, Bijan Singh Bedi had already overstayed his uh, invitation to the Indian team. Uh, but that uh, tour of Pakistan was the graveyard for uh, all our top spinners. Bedi, Prasanna, Venkat, Chandra, all their careers were now ending and India did not have a great uh, spinner to replace them. They just didn't have. Uh, now, cut to uh, uh, Bij uh, MS Dhoni uh, giving the ball to Joginder Singh, who is unheard of before and unheard of after. Right? Nobody knows where that guy disappeared. A puny looking guy who comes and bowls and Ms. Bowlak uh, obliges by hitting really a reasonably bad ball straight into the hands of Shri San. Now, there is a tremendous amount of luck and this happened in the first ball. If it had happened in the third ball, the match would have been over by then. They did not need too many runs, right? So, it's not the first time that Ms. Bahul Haq was doing something like this. Even in the 2007 uh, World Cup, uh, he let the match go when he needed one run of two balls and uh, he made a mess of it, right? So. So, the question is, you have to know how the opposition will behave and then you take a decision etc. and you could be right or wrong. Like MS Dhoni would leave a lot of chases to the last and we would wonder why is he doing that. But if he pulled off a, a rabbit from the hat, then you called him a magician and if there was no rabbit coming out of the hat, then you said, oh God, this guy is an atrocious failure. Now, Going back to investment, what has this got to do with investment? And I am telling you all this was possible because that was a time when I, when India toured Pakistan, I was watching the match very carefully in 2007 when I knew what happened in the match. So, so this is just in context saying the result bias, when the result is good, you think the decision was good and when the result is bad, you think the decision was bad. Now, that is very difficult to know whether it is like, for example, I keep saying investing in life is uh, more like poker uh, than like chess. For example, in chess, 
the chances of uh, an amateur beating a grandmaster is uh, zero. I mean, absolutely zero. It's like uh, you cannot uh, stand up to Andre Agassi and say, "Let's play a match." He'll he'll pulverize you. I'm I'm talking of a retired Andre Agassi. I'm not talking of uh, somebody who is uh, uh, who's playing today. I'm not talking of somebody like that. Somebody who's retired a few, at least a decade ago, or maybe one and a half decades ago. He'll smash you simply because it requires tremendous amount of. Uh, of course, it requires uh, talent, experience, etc. So Similarly, in a game of chess, the chances of you meeting beating um, Vishwanathan Nandanand or anybody is uh, very very close to zero. I mean, if you're doing some fraud like uh, somebody did, and I'm not ma- naming the broking company who see who did that. Other than that, chances of beating somebody like Vishwanathan Nandanand is very difficult in chess. But in poker. it is not so difficult to beat a champion right so because there is tremendous amount of luck also involved now same thing for your investments you could make mistakes and you could still get away with it right or you tell your uh, dealer that ye uh, becho and he doesn't sell for whatever and you don't notice and after 3 days the price has gone up 20% so these kind of things can happen uh chess for example there is a lot of d- the database of moves everything is there in the computer so chances are somebody can design an excellent super computer which will beat human beings every time simply because it has some maybe 1 million new moves in its head and it is able to compare and see what will be the outcome uh similarly in investing you can make mistakes and uh, benefit by that Uh, you can do something which is ridiculously wrong and still benefit by that you could have just bought steel at the bottom of a cycle saying how can uh, tata steel go below 150 rupees or something like that and find that it has gone to 600 rupees and you be able to sell it just because you got the steel cycle right right so something like that or something like luck it's a it's a play of cards the question is uh, where you dealt a good hand right so it's very important to know how to analyze your decision for example in uh, i think july 2000 2018 or slightly before that i sold uh, mrf at uh, about 80000 rupees why did i sell mrf no great logic don't even ask because i don't know uh, i don't think i knew why i was selling but i needed to buy i think mine tree or something i bought I, it's not as though i kept the money in the savings bank account and uh, i just sold uh, mrf should i have sold i don't know i bought it sometime in the 1990s or i think uh, 1997 98 at about 800 rupees here i was uh, sitting on a 100 bagger and i said let me pay some capital gains at uh, that time there was no capital gains perhaps i'm not very sure and i sold off mrf it was in my mother's portfolio and whatever i had i just sold off Uh, in retrospect, I know to date is at eighty-seven thousand, so it's not really done too much in the last five years. Yes, it has done well, but uh, it has not really. Uh, uh, it wouldn't give a bonus. It wouldn't give a increase in the payout of dividend. The same old dividend was coming, so I said, okay, there are better prospects. The market will respect some other companies better. So I went. I think I bought Mind Tree. I'm not very sure. Today I don't have Mind Tree, so I don't really know. so uh, it is very difficult to go back and analyze a decision unless you maintain a diary and you say okay this is what i will do this is a decision this is the reason why i uh, am selling for example if i sold uh, say let's say i had google and i sold google saying oh it can't grow at this speed google is a classic in uh, company which is uh, 240 billion turnover and still grows at 30% uh the share price has grown at 41% so this kind of growth would never have attributed to a big company how many big companies would we know where the growth is 41% or 30% it's so difficult to believe that this can happen but it has happened so if you reach a stage when you say oh my god i don't think reliance can grow faster than this or reliance will grow bigger than this or it will make money uh, because i think it is grown in size it cannot grow at 30% like some other uh, company can grow so because i want growth i will sell reliance and i buy something else but it turns out that reliance enters some new fields and grows at a fantastic pace there very difficult in uh, to be able to say will that mistake 
be very expensive or will it uh, will you be able to live with it right is it too expensive to have sold suppose you have uh, 500 uh, reliance then in a portfolio of say 10 crores then it may not matter but if you have 5000 reliance in a portfolio of 4 crores or 3 crores then it might matter that you sold off and so is it a very big error is it a small error is it an error at all and are you judging yourself based on the results which are coming very difficult to say so decision analysis is very important and for decision analysis as an investor the most important thing is to maintain a diary to say why you are buying or why you are selling for example the reason why i bought zomato uh, at 47 was i thought ashwath damodaran had said uh, 47 is the price so uh, at which uh, uh, his valuation i thought was 47 so i bought then it went to 45 so i bought and then went to 41 somebody i realized on twitter that 41 is the price mr ashwath damodaran had said that would fall to it, it value was but at the same time ashwath damodaran also came out with a valuation saying uh, now that i have revised it i think the price should be 35 so that was a time when you had to think whether at 35 you would buy more or at 41 you would buy more or you just say that's enough i bought uh, enough then one day later i find uh, i mean that was uh, on monday right, or tuesday i found that the price had reached 55 which was a fantastic price because i was not expecting such a quick uh, return i was more an investor Uh, but i don't know whether it to sell at 55 or hold on waiting for it to go to 100 or 150 or finding what are the new things which are happening i quite like it right but time alone will tell whether the decision to buy uh, zomato was a good share good uh, decision or a bad decision i have no clue as of now i think it's a good model and i like it and i have bought it but uh, i'm not even suggesting that you buy it at 55 i may even be a seller at 70 right so i don't know but uh, anybody who wants to deal in these shares should look at the price fluctuation that an apple or a facebook has given so for me buying a small quantity of zomato at this price and holding on is easier than buying a big quantity and selling off as the price goes up then i may just this i may just hold on till it reaches 200 or 250 or i may start selling and buying back or things like that so anything is possible so don't judge yourself on the basis of what is the outcome judge your basis on judge yourself on the basis of why you took the decision write it down and later on this will be useful for you when you have to take the next decision i've sold mrf i've sold reliance i've sold hgfc limited i've sold hgfc bank all at very good prices i'm not even complaining but the chances are maybe i bought something else and that could have been funded by selling something worse than uh, hgfc bank i i could have sold something else and bought uh, happiest mindset or something like that it was not always a very sensible switch that i was making but only if you write down the reasons will you know why you did it thank you